The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Carrie Vistros here with another Canola School episode. I have here with me Sean Sanko, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. We're here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, to talk about late season scouting. What should producers be looking out for right now? That's a good time to be out looking for um, for diseases in the field. You know, most of them have had a chance to now um, uh, get close to the end of the life cycle and you can find them easy. So. You know, swathing time is a perfect time. You're out there cutting, you know, stop. You can um, pull a plant, cut it, look at the, the base of the, the just above the, the soil line, look for black leg, um, pull that root, you know, see if there's any club root uh, on the on the roots, and also check the plant for, for sclerotinia. So you can get all three done in, in one stop. And it's, it's it's ideally a good time when right at swathing, when the plant is still fresh and um, there's been no chance for other saprophytes to move in and confuse the diseases. And how quickly can those saprophytes move in? Anytime there's dead tissue, so you know that um, that stalk will dry down pretty quick. So just depending on environmental conditions, um, it, it can happen pretty fast. So that's why swathing is the ideal time. Even something like um, straight cutting, if that stem's had a chance to dry down and your plant's um, been dead for a bit, uh, you can also have them move in. It can make it a bit more confusing. It's still a good time to look, but um, you know you can make a bit a few more mistakes if it's at that point. Are there any diseases that you recommend producers look out for before the crop gets cut? Uh, sclerotinia is uh, you know, a, a good one to be looking for, um, just uh, you can usually see those patches in the field, um, you know, and it, it really anything you, you see any, that looks off in the field, it's, it's a good chance to walk in there, start pulling plants, you know, we've got um, club root, uh, uh, black leg and sclerotinia and they can all cause patches in the field and it's, it's just good to know where you are and what's, what's causing those problems for you can deal with them in future years. So looking a bit more into black leg, when you're clipping that plant, what does it actually look like inside the stem if it's infected? It'll be kind of like um, a pie shaped blackening. So you'll see from the center kind of the, the wedge of the pie going out and, and you'll see a, a wedge in there. So we usually rate it in a one to five scale. So a thin, like, you know, one slice of pie would be what you'd call like a one. And as it gets wider, um, you go all the way to a five, which would be completely choking off the plant. Um, uh, stock and uh, and causing death of the plant, so it can be quite a variable range. And do any of these diseases produce spores that overwinter in the soil? So, for example, if you're seeing them in the fall, you'll have to worry about them coming back in the spring. Pretty much all of them, yeah. Like um, you know, sclerotinia at at the end of its life cycle will, will form the sclerotia bodies, and those will overwinter in the in the ground. Um, black leg um, will will be in the the actual residue of the plant. I mean, that's where you know the, the idea of the, the four-year rotation came from. It takes four years for that woody bit, that bottom piece of stem, to, to break down, and that's where the black leg um, is actually harboring in that that part of it. Um, and club root, yeah, those, those club root spores will, um, you know, they're in the soil. So you, you want to make sure you're finding that. Um, yeah, if you've got any club root galls out there, finding them and, and dealing with them. For club root, there's obviously no control right now, but is there a way that you can control sclerotinia or black leg? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, um, for, for black, uh, sclerotinia is primarily environmental disease, so um, it, you know, it really varies year to year. Um, there's not many places in, in Western Canada that say that we don't have inoculum just due to the amount of canola growing. So, It'll be more just a, a heads up to, you know, you might want to be watching future years, um, you know, and, and possibly using a fungicide. Um, there are some, you know, varieties now that have some um, sclerotinia tolerance to it as well. So, you know, if you're in a heavy pressure and the year looks right, you might want to try something like that. Black leg, yeah, um, that's something you definitely want to be checking for because there are, you know, number one thing would be a rotation to, to make sure you're, you're not uh, pushing it too tightly. But there's also now, um, you know, resistant, different resistance out there. So we can look at the labeling system and decide if this variety is not working, maybe we should be going to a, another variety. Okay, awesome. Anything else you'd like to add about pre-harvest or post-harvest scouting? I, you can also, at that point, um, you know, if you haven't done plant counts, um, you know, after harvest, actually the stalks are still there. If the ground hasn't been worked, it'll give you an idea as well how many plants did I actually get per square foot and, you know, how many was I aiming for. So it'll give you that survivability idea for, for subsequent years when you're doing your, your seeding rates. 